off a variety of triggered emails that uh, Tommy uh, just talked about that is being generated both based on customer behavior, think about searches, category navigations, customers drilling down into facets, uh, product, product views, add to carts, wish lists, all of that, but also more interestingly based on changes in the product catalog that Tommy and his team are interested in. Think about price drops, think about inventory coming in and out, uh, think about ratings and reviews that are changing because customer behavior is only one half of the story when it comes to personalization. You really need data from your product catalog and all the analytics around it to be able to increase the order of magnitude of possibilities when it comes to doing relevant messages. So it's just a neat way to look at this uh, uh, across the board. What I'll do next is take a look at one of those uh, emails. So for that, uh, we're actually going to do a live demo. This is uh, relying on the internet, so hopefully this all works out. But if it doesn't, it'll all be fine. So what you're seeing here on the left-hand side, you're looking at uh, DurhamStore.com. It's the live website. Uh, we just loaded it up. And on the right-hand side is an instrumentation console uh, of Bluecore. This is not a management console. Think of it as a peek under the hood of Bluecore. And we're going to do some behaviors on the site and uh, see what happens on the right-hand side. So I'm going to do a search uh, for dark circles, because a lot of us have those, and uh, hit Enter. DurhamStore comes up with results. And uh, we're thinking on the right-hand side for a few seconds. And in seconds, we generated what could be a potential triggered email to that customer. Not that we would send it right away. Um, not that this is the only behavior that's relevant for that customer. But the point being that once you have the behavior and real-time data from the catalog, you can match it up and generate possibilities of emails that were not uh, doable before just with behaviors. So inside this email, this is an example of search targeting, happens at the top of the funnel. You see products that are based on that search. There can be bestsellers from that site or from that category at a given moment in time. And most importantly, this is not relying on analytics from uh, another system. It's not relying from on feeds from another system uh, because it's hard to keep all of that data in sync uh, once you rely on those third-party systems. So uh, it's a neat way to just uh, look at all of that. Uh, inside of, uh, of one email. I got one more demo. And uh, Tommy mentioned triggers are great. Uh, they have uh, really good performance when it comes to open rates, click throughs, ROI, but reach is limited, right? There's only so much you can do with uh, active audiences. And uh, one of the things that Tommy and his team challenged us too was what do I do with proactive sending? How can I use the efficacy of triggers and bring all of that data into my proactive sense? And that's where live segments comes into play. So what you're looking at here, uh, you don't have to read all of this, is basically a way for the marketer to organize your behavioral data and the catalog data into rich segments that are then kept live and synchronized, hence the name. So I'm gonna drill down into one such segment, it's named Hue Enthusiasts. And uh, when I go in there, Underneath all of this is a really robust data warehouse that has e-commerce semantics, it understands products, it understands uh, SKUs, it understands how that changes over time, along with uh, all of that behavior. And basically what this is saying is that, show me, product, show me customers that you choose in the last seven days. Let me go ahead and uh, uh, specialize that a little bit, and uh, I'm going to say, hey, show me customers that have a lifetime value of a certain amount, let's say 150, and I'm gonna change the days on there, and uh, I'm going to hit preview. Now one of the things with this is, you don't have to generate SQL, you also don't have to think about how much data is in the system. Turns out that uh, with behavioral data, you can easily end up in the hundreds of gigabytes pretty quickly, so as you add data to the system, you have to think about how you can query them instantly and how you can take it to campaign execution. So we'll wait for that, and uh, in roughly 15 to 20 seconds, you get that audience sizing exercise done, and you can do it over and over again. On the right-hand side, what you're seeing is a list of customers. It's a visualization, so each of them are keyed by their email address. This is all fake data. But most importantly, we have the customer and all the rich interaction data along with that. So if you look at that, oh, I didn't click on that. If you look at this one customer, it's saying that this one customer interacted with this section of your catalog. These are the products they have affinity with. 
which means that you're not getting a flat list of customers from, uh, from your data warehouse. You're getting a list of customers, their interactions, which means that when you take it to campaign execution, you have all of that in there with you, even within the same segment. So you can generate unique content, unique products for each of those customers. So that's it for demos, and I'm gonna switch back to uh, the slides. I'm glad uh, the internet held up. So what is all of this up? All of this matter? This is not really about one tool or one technology. Uh, as Tommy said, I think it's about thinking about a new way of getting work done when you have data sitting in separate systems inside your organization. Uh, so what we did was uh, we actually had a chance to sit with about 200 marketers, and uh, we have some interesting data points, three of which I want to share with you today. The first one, uh, as Ankur mentioned earlier, is that it takes a lot of time to figure out what to do with big data. Every year for the past few years has been the year of big data. It's true. Um, a lot of you know how to store big data, but a lot of marketers are telling us that uh, while we have all the data, getting to that last mile with insights, taking action on, that's the hard part. Uh, that's why you're seeing 66% of marketers saying that they're going to make data-centric investments and continue to do that. Uh, and you have to do that because the underlying technologies are also changing pretty fast when it comes to uh, when it comes to handling and taking action on big data. The second one talks about while there's been a lot of investments in personalization, when you personalize, it comes at a cost. It comes at the cost of extra workflow, more data, more creative. So you can't think of personalization without investing in automation. Not that everything can be automated. There are some examples that Tommy mentioned around brand nurturing where you have 70 different types of content that are synchronized automatically. So the point being that there are certain cases where automation can reduce your workflow and increase the efficacy of your marketing activities, uh, which is why <coughs> there's been a lot, of refo uh, a lot of new focus happening specifically on automation and how to scale that with personalization. And the last one, uh, Actually, I'll ask for a quick show of hands. Please participate. How many of you have bought some kind of marketing technology that promised something, but didn't quite go that last mile? Didn't deliver it? Okay, that's a good show of hands. Eight out of 10 marketers are saying that not only are they going to change what they buy, they're going to change how they buy it, right? And that's key, because when you think about bringing in new technology on, into your stack, you have to think about how does it get integrated? How is it talking to other systems? When does it get deployed? How fast does it happen? What if I don't get the ROI from it? Do I, can I try something else? These are all the questions that have to be built into, into your process. Uh, so I think that's a, that's a really important one that's gonna uh, be good for everyone in the long run in terms of expectations. So as I said before, this is about a change that's happening uh, in the market when it comes to thinking about data and how to use it. And while I can go on and on uh, with pie charts and data, I think it's more powerful to see stories such as the one that Tommy showed. And over the past few days, I've heard and witnessed some of these stories from all of you as well. And that's what I'm taking back from Etail today. And uh, I hope that you will get to experience um, and share some of those stories and get inspired as well. With that, I would like to open up for questions. And uh, Tommy's going to be available after the talk as well. Thank you. question right is it, it's about uh, content that's on the site that, that needs to be synchronized and the, I didn't hear the second portion what was the last portion well right now with the trigger emails you can do a lot with emails so I'm wondering if in the future this technology will let me as the web merchandiser um, pull from it to determine which hero images to show or something like that in the future yeah so uh, there's two pieces to that uh, we talked about having all the catalog data in the system 
Um, we didn't talk about content here, but it turns out you can synchronize content in the same way as well. So you can now start having associations between uh, certain types of content along with those products, right? So if I search for uh, some products that have uh, some kind of hero image associated with it, you can synchronize that. Uh, the second piece, uh, I think, uh, if I heard you right, is about how do you access that data uh, once the emails have been sent. Um, and uh, part of Live Segments lets you do that, which is once I've sent these emails, how do you now backtrack from that into the products that made the most impact, into the content that made the most impact? Uh, so the dashboard doesn't let you do that right now, but there's other ways we can talk about it. Right. Saying I'm out of time. Thank you.